grab a hot beverage and your planner and let's do a reset for November. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day. It's that time of the month where we sit down and we talk about what worked and what didn't and set our goals together. And I'm actually doing this video get ready with me style because that's how I have to fit you in. So I'm ready now, but I won't be in a second. Hi. I put clothes on. I'm wearing a sweater because it's actually cold today. I had to turn my heater on last night and I fought it. And then at six o'clock this morning, my husband said, I'm cold. And if he's cold, it must be cold. Let's do some skincare. So October, much like September, felt like it was just speeding through the neighborhood, throwing candy out the window. <laughs> Where'd you go? That was, hmm. Um, and I'm holding two opposing views. One is, okay, I need the rest of the year to slow down. And number two is, good gosh, this year just needs to be over. But I also have lived long enough to know that it doesn't matter if the year changes, all of your struggles don't just magically end at midnight on January 1st. And I've been really honest about the fact that 2023 has not been a banner year for me. It's been really hard. There's been a lot of difficulties. I've been through worse things in other years, but this year it's just like all the little things. Anyway, let's talk about October. So in these reset videos, I talk about my personal goals, business goals, life goals, all of those things, uh, what worked, what didn't, what I've been enjoying and what I'm reading. That's just kind of a little breakdown. And then at the end, I share some journal prompts. Should I do my hair first or my makeup? What do you, when you're getting ready, what do you do first, your hair or your makeup? I'm gonna do my makeup. Like what actually happened in October? Um, this month I started back to school. So I took August and September off sunscreen and then I started back and my goal is and continues to be to cash flow my tuition. And that is what I'm doing. And so I make little monthly payments right now. That's fine. Um, I had I talked about this on Instagram. I keep my tuition money in a high yield savings account. And I don't understand why more people don't use high yield savings because, and my interest rate is on the low end of the high yield, but it, I've just had the bank so long I don't want to switch. Um, it's 4.5%. But there's some that are almost 6% right now. And if you're not using a high yield savings account for at least your emergency fund or your sinking funds, what are you doing? <laughs> but not taking out student loans is my number one priority when it comes to this degree. It's not even graduating on time. It's not even acing all my classes. It's just not putting my family into debt to accomplish this goal. And I've not had to so far. And hopefully I only have this term in one more term. We'll see. I've been a little bit of an Eeyore about this term. Um, and my mentor was reminding me that you chose the hardest program here. And you're trying to accelerate it while being a grown-up and living your life and raising children. So, you know, give yourself some grace. <sighs> I transferred schools last year and I was all cocky because I was getting straight A's at my last school, which is a decent school, but this program is just so intense. But it'll all be worth it one day, right? It'll all be worth it one day. <sighs> So my school goal is in November to finish up two classes because it's self-paced. So you can take as many classes as you want in a six month period. Love that more online degree programs are moving towards that. I have had people ask, what are you studying and where are you going to school? It's not a secret, it's just private. And I'll let you know when I'm done. To be weird about it, I just, um, I don't know. It's like sharing your baby's name. Don't do it till after your baby is born. Speaking of babies, I had the honor of throwing, helping throw a baby shower. And my husband made the cake and it was absolutely adorable. It was an uh, under the sea, sea creatures, beach type shower. And it was Jason's first time working with fondant. And of course, because everything he does is just great. <laughs> It was so cute. They say opposites attract. My husband is good at everything the first time and I am not. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, you might be me. 
October was just the month of baby showers and birthday parties. And there came a point when I was like, okay, no one else needs to celebrate anything life because <laughs> because my gift budget is gone. What else? Um, my kids did an entrepreneur fair. They opened up a little bakery um, and participated in a kids entrepreneur fair, which some of those kids are so talented and just... I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed at what kids are capable of. And I think that budget wise, I don't know if I talked about this in my September update, but you know, we've had issues getting some things covered with our insurance for um, one of our children. And we officially got a diagnosis in August and now 100% of our speech and OT visits are covered by insurance forever. So that's exciting. Um, that's a huge burden off of us because at one point we were spending the equivalent of our mortgage payment on therapy, on these services that this child needs. And we're gladly doing it. We, we, we would do what we need to do to make that work. Um, and I'm grateful to be in a position where I can do what I need to do because I know that there are a lot of kids who their parents just can't. They they can't financially. And sometimes they don't have the time or the energy to fight. And that's not a, that's not me giving making a slight. It's me understanding that if you're a parent working multiple jobs and you're just trying to keep food on the table, spending the hours a week to fight with your insurance on the phone is an emotional burden that you just can't carry. And so this was a this was hard um, and I understand what business goals. So I have started working with a couple of clients that took off over the summer. I talked about that in my September video. Um, I'm actually available to do Pinterest um, for about five to ten hours a week now if anyone needs a Pinterest assistant to make pins and do all that or if you know someone who does, let me know you can email me. I'll leave the link. There may already be a link down there. I feel like we're finally on a good schedule with school and with my school and with work. Um, that of course the new year is going to come and that may all change, but we're just rolling with it at this point. But I feel good and I feel confident in my ability to turn things down now that just don't work for our family. Okay, so what did I read in October? It was actually a lot. So I talked about three books in my last video, The Starter Villain, The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy, and Every Wish Way. Let me tell you what I read, The Starter Villain. I absolutely loved it. It was so weird. Jason read it before I did, and he was like, Lydia, this is the weirdest book I've ever read. You're absolutely going to love it. It was hilarious. Now, it did have some language, so if you are bothered by language in books and references to violence, because it, it was a little violent, but it was comedic violence, um, you're not going to like this book. But basically, without giving it away, this man is... He's a out of work news reporter, <laughs> relate, and he is now a substitute teacher who has recently gone through a divorce, and he his very wealthy uncle dies, and he gets an inheritance from his uncle with a ton of contingencies attached, and he becomes a villain. There is an island with a volcano. There are sentient dolphins. There is just a lot of like, huh, what? But also hilarious. Um, I loved it. So if you're into weird, you're going to love it. It's also a very quick read. So the second book I read was The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy, which was also kind of weird. Somebody recommended it to me. They're like, it's very Halloween-y. So it's basically you've got mail meets... Greek mythology, kind of in the world of that mythology, where there are undertakers that, you know, carry souls across the underworld. But it's a love story. It was a little smutty. I didn't know it was going to be. And then I got into a chapter. And I'm like, whoa, okay, let's just move on from that. Um, but it was cute. So if you don't like smut, don't read it, which I, I really don't. Um, but I still thought it was a cute read. 
I ended up putting down Every Wish Way, which is like a modern day um, Pride and Prejudice. And that was, I, I just couldn't get into it. I feel like it is something that I could get into later. Like it would be a good book to read on a road trip or on a vacation. I don't see a vacation in my future anytime soon. But it's on my Kindle just waiting for later. I did end up reading, I listened to actually, Britney Spears' memoir, The Woman in Me, and I have a lot of thoughts about it. Um, I grew up in the Britney era, and so I am well-versed with her music and who she was when she first came out and how iconic she was. And if you were a teenager in the early 2000s, you know. And, um, you know, I've kind of followed her story, and I hope she's okay. And it made me sad that she's talking about how great her husband is and then they're divorced by the time the book comes out. Like there's just so much there and a lot of healing that still needs to happen. Okay. <clears throat> Books I'm going to read in November. So I've got The Spencer's Guide to Dangerous Dukes. Dead on Target by M.C. Beaton. This is billed as a cozy mystery. I got these from the library. And this I started yesterday and it's so good so far. It's The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. Now, I've not read any of her stuff other than Addie LaRue, which I absolutely loved. It was one of my top picks of 2020. Um, so, we'll see. It's But so far, it's really, really good. Um says, once there were four worlds nestled like pages in a book, each pulsing with fantastical power and connected by a single cry, London, after a desperate attempt to prevent corruption and ruin the four Londons, there are only three. Grey London, thriving but rarely able to remember its magical heritage. Red London, ruled lately by the Maresh King, flourishing and powerful. And White London, left to brutality and decay. And it's about a young woman in the midst of that. And these, I don't know what they're about. I just grabbed them because the librarian told me I would like them. Some of my goals for November I touched on. Um, one of them is to get two classes done, continue to cash flow my tuition. The money's already there, so um, thank you. I don't know, one day I'll sit down and talk about the nitty gritty details of that. Um, three, have all of my Christmas shopping done by Thanksgiving. So that gives me 22 more days. My kids wants a drum set. He wants drum lessons and a drum set. We'll make it work. Fine. Oh. I'm thinking of the electric ones where you wear the headphones. Because I have met and exceeded the amount of noise my brain can process in a day. It's okay. I'll do it for him. Anyway. Um, our, November is a busy month. We have a birthday. My oldest son is turning 12. And the realization that this is the last year I won't have a teenager is sinking in. And we you know, stop, stop. How? How are you 12? And he's almost as tall as me. And I'm not okay with any of it. And his voice is changing. And it's just he's such a good kid. He's such a good kid. Um, and I remind him of that all the time. Like, you're just amazing and you're awesome and you're kind and you're just a good kid. Um, and I think kids need to hear that more. Um, but also the day after his birthday is our wedding anniversary. And so um, we celebrated our anniversary in September by going on a little weekend trip and we'll probably grab lunch Sunday afternoon. Uh, we may go on a little quick little trip that week with our kids for the birthday just as a family thing. Um, but November is a lot of wrapping things up and making holiday plans and it's just going to be a busy time. Yay. Um, another thing that I'm doing is focusing on gratitude in November. Um, and so I have this book, his, I have this book, His Mercies Are New by Ashley Nicole Wilson. It's just a gratitude journal. So it's not really a book, but there are some quotes and verses and then you write down a few things every day that you're grateful for. This is the second copy I've bought. I will link it below. And so I'm going to focus on November really focusing on gratitude. I had a morning where I woke up and I may have talked about this on here already, but I felt like 
something's off. And I got my stuff. I'm heading to the gym. I keep thinking, I've forgotten something. I've forgotten something. I've forgotten something. I get halfway to the gym and I realize I haven't forgotten anything. This is the first time I've woken up in a long time where I didn't feel anxious or worried. I just woke up. And the, those feelings have become such commonplace with me that not waking up feeling that way felt off. And so I've had more days of waking up not worried, um, not having panic attacks in the middle of the night. And so I just feel really grateful. I don't know. I don't know what has made the difference other than Jesus, <laughs> but I, I feel good. Um, now I'm preparing myself for the time change on Sunday by taking my vitamin D and my B and my uh, magnesium and making sure I get outside in the morning because I get the grumpies during. Okay, let's do some journal prompts. And be sure to answer the journal prompts in the, the comments if you wanna share. Okay, what is something that you feel like you're actually good at? <laughs> so this is something that I struggle with is being good at stuff and talking positively about myself. And something that I am good at is encouraging others and being an encouraging voice to them and pointing out the good things that they're doing and the wonderful things about them. And I feel like that's a gift, like it being an encouraging voice to people. There's so many negative voices in the world that maybe we need more people to be like, hey, you're doing good and I'm proud of you. And you look great and your hair looks fantastic and you're doing a good job as a mom and everyone at work loves you. Um, but I need to talk that way about what would you tell January you now that the year is closing? Um, trust yourself. If you think something is wrong, believe it. If you think that you need to seek advice about something, do it. Don't what, what is that quote? Don't dig up and doubt what you planted in faith. Like if, trust that, trust that like check in you that something's not right. And also trust that you are able to do things <laughs> like you're smart and you're capable and you can do hard things. Finally, how can you support yourself and your emotional well-being during the fall? Like I said, I'm taking my vitamin D. I'm taking my um, B complex, which by the way, I talk about this all the time, but my dentist is the one that pointed out that I was B deficient because he saw something in my gums. And I like, when I say that he saw my gums didn't look right. And he said, have you been told before that you're B deficient? And I said, yes. And he said, then take them. And when I say that after about two weeks of taking that B, I felt like, is the air made of drugs? Like, why do I feel so good? And my hair is growing back and what is happening? Because when you're deficient and you finally get what you need, you feel like a person again. And so that's that's a lesson. When you are deficient in something and you get what you need, you feel human again. And maybe that thing that you need is sunlight, vitamins. Maybe it's community. Maybe it's someone to talk to. Maybe it's taking care of yourself and getting enough sleep. Maybe it's putting down your phone and reading a book. Whatever it is, like find it and do it and you will feel good better. Um, and fall and winter can be a hard time for some of us with the lack of sunlight and just wake up early, get that morning light, eat root vegetables, go for a walk, do the things that make you feel cozy. I hope you have a cozy November.